Netanyahu. The only reason he started this project in the first place was because of her online. One day, he can make a chloride to perchlorate without a rose of you using net dioxide electrons. So I try it and I get brown soap, up on brown soap, up on brown soap, yo. And then I didn't realize that with all this all experiments, all they had to do was use a neutral. And that requires oxygen evolution at the canon instead of chlorine evolution to preserve the electron lifetime, yo. Let me see his voice. And this is from the hypochlorite cell. I'm trying to make it go all the way to perchlorate. And good news. So it turns out that the erosion will occur regardless. Like, the erosion will not occur if you stay within the chlorate forming range. But if you start to get, like, into the perchlorate forming range, the erosion will occur with a vengeance. However, there's not a lot of, like, dark deposits at the bottom. This is simply all superficial, which suggests that this type of uh, process is actually quite good. Like, honestly, this is still better than the, you know, the pH control. And the pH is very high here. However, I've tested the liquid and it causes instant precipitation and there's also a smell of ozone in the air, so we're definitely there already. Okay, so this is a bit of the sample solution, yeah, from the cell. Now, I'm going to show you that this contains, you know, some potassium, I mean some, some perchlorate where by doing the instant precipitation test. You can see that precipitation was very quick. Now, if this was chlorate, it would take a hot minute. But yeah, that shows we indeed have perchlorates. So, I've swapped the electrodes. This is the one I was using in the cell. You can see that the stem takes considerable damage, but that's with every single lead dioxide electrode. Even commercial ones suffer from this. That's because lead dioxide really doesn't like to hold on to a very flat surface. In fact, that's why they only plate these on meshes. There have been no other damages except for a chip over here when I accidentally dropped the electrode due to it shorting out. And so because of this chip, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to replace it with the other one. And I'm going to plate this more, actually, since this chip seems to still have the tin oxide attached to it and not the titanium. It will accept the new plating in no time. You look, there's a chip at the edge. Yeah, that chip will accept the new plating in no time, but yeah. And also, this handle looks a little unsightly, but what can you really do? Anyway, that's it. I was going to give an update that basically, even running at 200 milliamps per centimeter squared, there's barely any erosion. And the thickness doesn't seem to be much more... You know, it's it's as if it was before, basically, and all of this is just micro. There is some erosion, though, but that's because of the, you know, chlorate to perchlorate transition. All right. So as you can see over here, right, you notice the water is cleared up already. You notice that very large bubbles forming on both electrodes. This is actually ozone and hydrogen being generated. Now, once the perchlorate cell has reached this stage, it means that this is the peak of perchlorate formation. No more erosion will occur at this stage, but erosion will start once again deep into the perchlorate stage. The pH of this cell is really high because uh, during perchlorate electrolysis, the pH goes back up to 11. Let's do some other reactions. Current density is currently around there, but I'm having issues with the, with the connections there. Really shit, I haven't, go, I haven't copper plated any of these electrodes, so I'm struggling to pump current and I have to drop water on them constantly just because they keep overheating. Well, anyway, so I'm just gonna, you know, we'll get to this when this thing is finally done or something else happens. So, I've attached a scrubber. The ozone's getting really bad. So that's a mixture of urea and a surfactant. The foam prevents mist from coming out. This demisting plus subsequent absorption into urea will destroy any ozone produced. That, that, that foam is very important because it increases the surface area of the solution over there. 
if you just do a regular scrubber, you're not going to get any of that benefit. If you do just a regular scrubber, you're most likely just going to get uh, some smoke still coming out. Anyway, I put this thing on top because there was smoke coming out. But now I don't need it. The foam is our savior here. This foam is what's, you know, slowing down the rate of diffusion, spreading it out more evenly. Well, it's technically not really slowing it down. It's just increasing the active surface area. And in chemistry, everything is important. Since we're not even going to use this solution and it's already being discolored because of the emissions from the cell, we can do whatever we, you know, we don't really care if it's impure or whatnot. You know, I, I should have probably put in a suspension of manganese dioxide and surfactant. That would have been much better than this. But I use this pump for other things, so I don't want to contaminate it with MnO2. But that's actually another viable thing. You can just open up a battery, toss it in this, add some soap and water, and you got yourself an ozone scrubber that's even catalytic, which is better than this. So, I have to keep scooping out this foam until you reach the critical micellar concentration of the surfactant I put in. Which is the rate in which the surfactant no longer produces more of these foams. Also, do not light this foam on fire. Although, it didn't really explode because it's highly diluted with air. If your cell ran more amps and you're using this, it's just not, you know... Maybe you should, you should add a very small amount of surfactant until there's a foam that's just a few centimeters. Because this is a hazard in and of itself. So yeah, I'm going to keep scooping this out carefully and safely. Okay guys, so I've upgraded the setup over here. I have my ozone scrubber. Here's the outlet to the ozone scrubber with surfactants and everything to ensure that, that the ozone doesn't uh, end up uh, permeating the room. And you can see over here, the electrode bubbling away, still fine, nice and thick. And the solution has fully cleared up as it gets to the uh, heart of the perchlorate cell run. You can see over here, the. Uh, not sure if you can see it well, but it's, uh, it's just bubbling away nicely in there. It looks majestic and, uh, I don't know, it looks like an electrode. Doesn't look like anything to. Okay, you don't want to know something, guys. So, the only reason why I need to give water to these stupid things is because I did this experiment originally as a one and done. Then was like, how far can I push it? So I'm pushing it hard. Also, here we're plating another electrode. I'm gonna sell a few of these soon because these things are kind of amazing. I mean, you can make whatever you know, things you want with them and they'll survive any condition you throw at them except for fluorides. Do not put these in fluoride environments. You can see after I put in the water, the current density goes up. Again, if you want to know the actual current, you divide this by... Oh no, you multiply this. No, you divide this by 1.43 or some shit. Okay, guys, current density is that, and look at that. You can see the electrode so clearly, and it looks so nice. Like, this thing is, does not even show any signs of degradation. And also, plating is going fine. I'm already doing the uh, active layer, but yeah, look at that. Now I'm going to test this and show you the results of this one for both chlorate and for perchlorate. Okay, so after testing the liquor using the uh, hot acid test, it showed that there's no more any chloride and even addition of acid did not change this color. There is some still, but it's very little. But running this further is... Uh, not 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 that beneficial and this is how the electrolyte cell looks at the end you know once it's really cleared up like this it's time to stop really you, you just test it so it seems that unlike any previous time there's no more this second erosion that occurs when the chlorate cell or the perchlorate cells at the end all of this is basically 90 95 98 percent perchlorate in there and a bit of hydroxide and other shit you know, current density has stayed relatively constant. Ozone scrubber with sodium nitrite is uh, 
getting rid of any horrible things and I'm gonna stop this now and that concludes our chloride to per chlorate but I'm obviously still gonna separate this and form perchlorate so there's that so you'll see that part as well so here's one funny thing that occurred this guy was wonky very very horrible that has caused a funny thing so these two electrodes look normally undamaged right both the old one and the new one that's just super blue spots however whoops i overcurrented one side because of the wonky assembly and burned down all the way to the titanium in like two spots over there that were closest to the cathode so you have to be very careful when making your cells otherwise this may might occur this electrode is still very much useful however i'm probably only going to use it to make sulfuric acid this guy on the other hand good enough for perchlorate synthesis so yeah be careful when you're using these electrodes use them properly so here's our end solution it's clear except i've disturbed the bottom but since there's a lot of magnesium sulfate added it's all flocculating out the only thing i have to do is filter okay so one more thing this thing is filtering good at yellow color it's not bleached by the way it's from the stainless steel electrodes that can uh, mess with the uh, color of the solution one thing with regards to the anodes the erosion mostly occurred due to bad construction this was never meant to run perchlorates I just was too lazy to get a different cell and set it up correctly so yeah if you run your electrodes within you know 200 milliamps per centimeter squared you should be fine in fact 150 is good enough for perchlorate just that I was probably running closer to 300 on that because I realized that the electrodes were sagging and you know my current density loading was off on one side as you saw anyway these uh, lead dioxide electrodes are chrome doped so there's already chromium in them and according to a paper I read the chromium actually increases the OEP when it's doped but when chromium is in high concentration and plates over the electrodes forming that lead chromate then it will actually mess with your efficiency but overall yeah so it plates all nicely and all of this is basically perchlorate started from store-bought sodium hypochlorite which may have also contained iron so this this uh, yellow color could also be the result of iron okay to prove that this color is not bleach when I immerse this you can tell that this solution is neutral does not bleach the paper I did it to the other piece of litmus paper and it indeed does not bleach it instead actually you know it's not neutral it's a bit acidic it's just slightly below seven but if this were bleach it would turn white so yeah it's just basically potassium perchlorate slightly discolored by iron chromium or whatever that is here we are boiling our 98 percent perchlorate solution and I've already tested before boiling make sure that your pH is uh, less than neutral otherwise you're gonna eat your aluminum now because of the magnesium sulfate additive I added before the perchlorate transition the pH was less than neutral like the pH was actually around like five to six which is good it took a while for the blue litmus to turn red I don't have my pH roll I used it all up but I'd say the pH is around there you know if it's high like 11 then you're going to have to uh, lower it with some hydrochloric acid which sadly will or you can use soda water and then just filter out your precipitated carbonates if any anyway once you boil this down you can then extract it with acetone or in my case I'm just gonna leave it be okay guys we're each this stage you want to use a wooden stick or a metal stick not a plastic spatula that's rated for heat because there's ozone I smell ozone coming off this this is uniquely the smell of ozone and I think the ozone has chewed up my spatula because 
I put this in and it just disintegrated. It isn't even that hot, but the stupid thing just broke at the edges as if something is corroding it. So yes, use metal or wood. Don't use plastic because the ozone will fuck it. Meanwhile, wood is sort of okay, it seems. Wooden spatula, metal spatula, but yeah, don't use plastic. Just do this to break apart the bottom. It should be fine. So I'll do this in two hands. So the weight of the empty container is 598 grams, and I'm going to fill it with this. Give me a second. Okay, so this is the full container. That gives us uh, 572 when you minus uh, 589, 598 from it. So yeah, that's good. 572, just as expected from that small of a cell volume. So yeah, this is a pretty good yield. And we should get like 600 something. But granted, I kept testing and losing stuff. This is to be expected. So I have a bit of our product here dissolved in concentrated hydrochloric acid and we're going to heat it now. So there will be some chlorate in this, but if you notice, it immediately clears up. Chlorate's all gone. And for further proof, you want? I'm going to uh, then put this down. Yes. So, chlorate's all gone. We then just add some potassium chloride into this. And we get a precipitation still. There's only one thing that can do that. 